Monica. Hi, it's our Hi from Yes Thai Kitchen. I am glad to be here and participate in the virtual tomorrow Monocultural Festival 2020. I hope you enjoy my home recording of a Thai not for a northern Thai dish called Kanom Jinam Miao. It's a traditional dish that made usually often by in the northern Thailand or anywhere right now. So I hope you enjoy and have a great day and come visit us at the St. John Farm Market every Saturday 9 to 4 p.m. Bye! Sawadee Sawadee ka! It's Oren Hai from Yes Thai Kitchen. I am back again with your noodle dishes. So last week or the week before that, I did a, a noodle dish from the southern of Thailand and it's called Kanom Jin. Um, and this week also, I am doing kanom jin but with a northern curry with it. So the noodle looking like this, it's a dry noodle. In Thailand, it's a fermented noodle. So they taste a little bit different. However, with this, when you, you know, finish cooking them, boil them in hot water for about 10 to 11 minutes, they came up looking exactly the same without a little bit that like tanging, like fermented taste into it. So anyway, so let's get started. So today I am making a sauce called Nam Nyeo. So Kanom Jin Nam Nyeo is what we're making. It's a famous northern, you know, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, Payao, all those province in Thailand, like up north. It is really, really, really famous up there. And what makes it different? Okay, so the curry paste for it, you know, Thai curry paste usually follow the same ingredient pretty much with a little bit of like different things. So, galangal, lemongrass, um, coriander roots, dry chili, a soap dry chili, uh, garlic, Asian garlic, you know, those little red onion. Uh, but in this, what makes this different than a regular like curry? They have this fermented um, soybean in them and they look like you can only find them in like northern of Thailand. They come in like weird like a sheet like round or like square sheet of this like dry fermented soybean. They taste really distinctly like that's why like it's a little bit different. You soak them and then they, you mix them with the curry paste and that's what makes it different. Also in this dish what make it different than the southern one is they use this this little dry thing is called I put I wrote it out it's called in English it's called dried cotton tree flour or dog new in Thailand we call it dog new you soak them in water for like an hour and then you know you can eat them actually when it's in your in your dish you can eat them when they cook and to me they smell like nothing I don't know why. I don't know why. It's, it's just, it has to be in a dish. I didn't create it, this dish, so I'm just follow the recipe. <laughs> That's how I learned it. Anyway, let's get started. Um, traditionally, we use a pork ribs and ground pork together, but today I don't have ground pork, so I'm gonna try to use ground chicken. So, in here, I have I added the um, vegetable oil. I'm gonna turn on my induction burner. So, apologize for the um, the loud the loudness of it. Okay. Okay. I put the oil in. I'm gonna let it turn it on a little bit beforehand. So it you know when it's hot, then you add your curry paste. However. In any type of Thai curry paste, I don't know about other type of curry, but in Thai curry paste, when you you know fry up the curry in like salt in the salted pan or whatever, you make sure you use a really low heat. Okay, you don't want to burn your curry paste. You can taste it like when you cook it. If you don't do it properly, you can taste the burn. And who like burn curry? Nobody. I don't like it. You don't like it either. I know. So. You don't need to wait until it's like super hot or anything, but right, you don't want to burn it. So, and you can find this this recipe, you know, anywhere. Is you know, use what you have. You don't need to use the rib. You don't have it. You can use um chicken. You can use like 
uh, chicken leg, nhuyệt wing, like whatever you have, like you know, your own fish and your own supper. But I think it's just nice, right? It's a warmer dish. The weather is cool now, so why not make something nice and warm and homemade? Homemade is always from anything if you have some time, obviously. Let them sizzling for a minute until I can smell. Okay, until I can smell um, like the curry. That is when I start putting in my meat. And because I'm using ground chicken and the pork rib, you make sure you cook the ground chicken like fully, like fully cook your ground chicken before you add your your pork. Okay. So they're not, you know, contaminate or all that jazz. I don't know. I didn't actually cook chicken and pork here. Is it even okay? I don't think so. I'm not sure. Okay. So there you go. Okay, I'm gonna add my ground chicken now. And because I'm doing with the pork rib, and that will take forever, forever more to cook. So what I did. Over there, I already have the ground, not the ground, sorry, the, the ribs cooked in the pot. Sort of like um, making a soup out of it. You have to add water, right? It's not a dry dish or anything. Okay. Okay, I see it's a little dry here. I'm gonna add some water, okay? So the cooked water in here, just add a little bit. Do you guys like my setup better? It's the best I can do, guys. This is it. Okie dokie. Okay. I'm gonna crank the heat up a little bit now because we put our like our liquid and then we wanna cook our meat fully. Okie dokie. You know what you guys been up to? It's Monday. Monday is my day off. What is what are you doing? Are you working today? What do you do after work? What are you having for supper? Anything good? I'm making this for me and my partner. And in the back over there, I'm also making a I using ground chicken as well with daikon. I'm making a daikon soup for my little boy. So that's what we're gonna have tonight. He is the most pickiest child in the world. Oh my god. Oh, hey, I'm gonna try, hey. Alright, while letting this cook, I'm gonna tell you what we have here. So, another main ingredient here is tomato. So, use any type of tomato you have at home. You don't have to go find it, you know, any exotic type, like use whatever kind. So, this is what I have is sweet tomato. I got it from Costco. They common and really easy to buy here. I have some fish sauce, as always. Who does like fish sauce? And I added a little bit more of a <coughs> excuse me, fermented soybeans. They look like this. My mother sent it from, from Thailand. So really, you know what? I priced up this, like how much it cost me to make supper tonight. Cost me less than $20. But really, if I have to add in the shipping of things that my mother sent me, it's gonna be about like 200 bucks. So, use what you have if you don't have this soybean. Don't worry about it. It's fine. If you don't have that dry, flowery thing, don't worry about it. Who knows? Nobody knows about that. Um, sugar, add some sugar. Have a little bit of salt. We, in Thai food, we don't use a lot of salt, really. We, we really don't, so, you know. We use fish sauce, right? So that's our, like, salty agent, I would say. Okay, now chicken. Cook, 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 cook. And 
hand before I forget. So I already played our noodle. This is our noodle. I will take picture later because I know it's really hard to see the full picture here. So we have our <laughs> Jesus cooling uh, vegetable. Um, cucumber, we have our mint, we have a really sad looking bean sprout that I try to grow myself, but you know, not green thumb. So, and this one, very important, is a pickle sour mustard thingy. And look like this. And you can find them at your local specialty store, okay? Get them, they're really, really good. They, you can make so many things with them. If you want another recipe for this, let me know. They're, really, they're like pickle sour, Asian style. Veggie. You can make soup with it. <clears throat> it's also a condiment for this, so it's a it's a side it's a side dish for like side, you know, condiment for this dish. And this is our noodle. <clears throat> and yeah, see, so this one is cooked. It looks just like this. And kind of deep in Thailand, look exactly like this. I miss home so much. But yes, this is this is our plate. I'm gonna put it aside. Yeah. Okay. And I think our chicken is pretty cooked through. I'm going to add my ribs. I'll be right back. So it's the rib with soup, okay? Rib soup basically. So it won't take us too long to cook this, it's pretty much done. And again, if you don't have the rib and you only have the ground pork, like ground chicken, just do that. You don't need to have the whole shebang, okay? So whatever you have in your fridge, use it up. And now because my chicken is cooked and my rib is already pre-cooked and then put it here I'm going to add my like seasoning and don't ask me if I measure them, I did not I don't ever measure anything unless it's for the market food obviously I have those recipes I know how, you know, if I'm making a lot of it so I have to know how much but this is only like small so I'm gonna add some fish sauce and we don't season in every step we go we season in the beginning like this and then we season at the end when we taste it we're like okay you know what we need more salt we need more fish salt we need more sugar depend okay I'm gonna add this baby the dry cotton tree flour look like this and don't forget tomorrow is October 1st it is our registration for the demo class is gonna be open we're gonna start doing it in November I think once a week every Wednesday or the last three Wednesday I think and I believe it's gonna be about three hours okay so it's gonna be me doing the demo or like you know different dishes not not curry not like red curry or thing like that not not the common dishes I try to bring like home more like a home cooked meal that you don't necessarily find them in a restaurant that's what I want to do and then Carla from the little uh, HK bakery she's going to demo you like show you how to make a like Asian inspired dessert it's gonna be delicious okay I put that dry flour in as always I'm gonna put this little um, what do you call it soybean fermented soybean in some sugar a tiny bit of salt you can always add them later if it's not salty now but when it's too salty then what are you gonna do with it right and chili some people a lot of people soak them before they put it in but I just put it in like this because it's already spicy enough you know it's, it's mild to medium spice but really, what I, why I put this in, I just want the look of it. I like the look of like chili like floating. It just 
make it look a little bit more together, I find. So add the babies in there. And don't you forget this um, tomato. Oh, I dropped one. Oops. And excuse me for the dog outside and the baby in the bedroom. Mom. Hashtag mom's life. Hi. So our dishes is cooked. Let's see. I took a picture of it. I think I'm going to post it on Instagram now. Because it is really hard for me with my setup to show you what it looks like. But just believe me that it's cooked. Edible. Okay. So. So it probably would take me about an hour. When you do it with the pork rib, it takes about an hour. When you do it with just a like um, chicken, 35 minutes. Okay. Or you can do it with beef as well. But traditionally, I believe is made with um, pork ribs and ground pork. Okay. So, but whatever meat you have at home, really straightforward, really easy. And if you don't have those couple things. Don't worry about it, you know, it's gonna still turn out really, really nice. I'm just lucky that my mother sent those to me and, you know, one of, like, couple of my friends here, they have, like, those little things, so I have supplier. Anyway, I'm going to grab the, the plate and then plate it for you and show you. You want your rib to be tender, right? You don't want it too hard. You don't want to just like just cook it and then eat right away. You want it to, you know, cook it for a while. So that's why I take an hour. And that's my, my rib has already been like cooking on the bigger stove for a while before I do the video. So that's why. Don't you guys like cooking? Anybody does? I do a lot. I do a lot of cooking. It's a therapy. You know what? You have time, you can do it yourself, do it. If you don't have time, well, then you come to Yes Thai Kitchen. That's why. Okay, um, my two years old is striking in there now, so I probably need to finish this up <laughs> and show you what it's like. Just like this. Ta da! Okay. All right. And here we go. Your kanom jinom nyo, okay? And again, sour pickle, bean sprout, green chili, mint lime, cucumber, and a fried chili. Oh, you don't have to fry them, but it's nice when you fry them, it smells better. Um, those are your like side condiment for this dish. And let me test it. Actually, I already tasted from the thing. Mm, spicy, I like it. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good night and I will see you again soon. And don't forget, tomorrow is your registration for the cooking with or Thai or about Thai with or Thai and Kala from the Little HK Bakery, okay? Thank you for tuning in and I will see you soon. And as always, สวัสดีค่ะ.